now we come to my favourite Superman film, is Superman 2. And I'm going to talk, I have to talk about both cuts, but I'll stay up front, straight away, I much prefer the Richard Lester theatrical cut. It's a much better film. And the the edited Donner cut later on didn't have so much material, it just shows how so much material wasn't shot by Donner, much was shot by Lester because there's so much material taken from the old the theatrical film that and the best they put back in from what Donner shot aren't very good at all. They're very much like the weaker parts of Superman 1, which is it's just like very weak logic, very cartoonish logic, and it's like it don't really it doesn't really work and it's the same end as Superman 1 we turns the world backwards. Which I try to avoid talking about no, talking about Superman 1. Um it's all that stuff in Donner Cut it doesn't work and it's it's a bit more sombre which is nice but it doesn't it's not really that funny watch. It's like I'm kinda of glad he was replaced because the film he obviously wanted to make wasn't very interesting. <laughs> From what the evidence says, what they've said what they were going to do, it just doesn't seem to really be that something you really want to see. The new version that Richard Lester was brought in has a lot more fun. And that's what you really wanted from Superman 2, is like, you'd set it up, the first one, but you wanted a film with more fun stories in it. And it's the great their story, basically Zod comes to Earth with two henchmen to fight Superman and to take over the world. At the same time Superman's having uh, a crisis of uh, confidence where he wants a real life with Lois Lane. He takes away his own powers to have that life. Then he realises that he should have done that when Zod shows up so he has to go back and get those powers and go back and save humanity from Zod. It's a very simple setup, but it really scores because it's got a it's a very basic primal thing of turning your back on who you are, what your needs are versus what the needs are of everyone else, things like that. And it just works. It's just a simple story, but it works. And it's, even though there's two directors involved, with one to go from the other, and sometimes you can see there's bits were shot from different directors because Donner shot Gene Hackman stuff, but Richard Lester shot most of the other stuff. So there's bits we can see because of different directors, there's like a crossover, but a lot of the Leicester stuff is brilliant. <laughs> it really, it's a different style, but it really works for what this film is. Because it's serious enough, but it's still funny. And it's also irreverent enough. So this kind of silly idea can work and have a kind of added scope, a comic book scope that really delivers from what you want from Superman. Because the first one delivered the, the kind of mythic version of Superman, but it wasn't that much fun. Clark Kent was fun, Superman really wasn't, and they didn't really give him much situations to bounce off, really. But that was part of the charm of the first one, because he was this great figure who was always for the right. That's the time you see him be much more human and have desires beyond just being this mythic figure. And that's what's really good about it. There's also some terrific sequences. I mean, the first section in Eiffel Tower, even though he could take on and beat any terrorists he wanted, still works because they set the situation up and things go wrong, he has to deal with things going wrong. And even though it's ultimately not a great threat, it still delivers a fun sequence and it shows him in this world. And it's much better than the sequence we have in the first one where Lex Luthor is going to blow stuff up because it's very brief, but I guess the point. It shows you him in his world and that's it. And then it follows that on with his stuff is on to the world and learn how to deal with humans and be very superior and not liking humans very much and thinking of his pets basically and great stuff. Terrence Stamp plays it to the hell. He's really funny. He really delivers. And it's where you see having Richard Lester as a director really works because he's a much more reverent director. He's much more cynical with the world, so you put an iconic good guy Superman against a world that's crazy, there's a much better reaction, the reactions are much more clear, so you have two things fighting against each other all the time. And that's what really works in this film, is because you've got the kind of man of the world versus the stoic Superman, even who's very conflicted in this one. So you see the build up of Zod, learning to deal with the world, 
and not succeed and so he just wants to be a fascist leader. And you have Superman dealing with um, Lois Lane. And it's got one of the best sequences where someone tries to discover his secret identity where Lois falls into a river intentionally and he has to save her without revealing that he's Superman. And he has to be very clever about it and it's like, it's a terrific sequence. It's based on him being clever rather than him being, using tons of effects and tons of strength. He just has to be very clever about it. So there's actually a good suspense sequence within that movie or that whole moment because they use the drama to create action. And later on when she finds out he actually has Superman because of the mistake he makes and it's like it was it's a subconscious trying to make that mistake. That's kind of stuff that's a bit more grown up that you don't really get in a Donner verse because it's more mythic. But you get with Lester so it's a much more interesting thing, at least for me, I think it's it's much truer to real life people. And that, that kind of mix of Lester being the real life versus the mythic just delivers. Then of course you have the big fight with Superman versus um, Zod and his minions in Metropolis where it's pretty dark, there's also some gags in there as well because Lester likes gags. Again, some of the gags are overdone but it still really works because Zod and his people are threatened they're actually out to kill people just to torture Superman. He eventually had to leave the city so they wouldn't kill anyone anymore. So, and then he eventually ends up filling them at the end as well. Basically, there's some plot mechanics. It doesn't really matter after that sequence. It's just like, it's to get to the end to beat Zod. It's, it's nicely done, but the thing he remembers, the big fight sequence in uh, Metropolis, which is the uh, Richard Donner directed sequence. And it's brilliant. And it's still one of those sequences everyone rips off in superhero movies. It's the one sequence everyone rips off. So it's, um, you do a big action scene in a city, you're probably going to rip off Superman 2. Not because you're trying to, it's just because it did it so well that they set up a lot of conventions of how you do superhero fight, so people go back to that, that's the basic way to do it. Because it was, it was done right. It's sort of the same way as like Halloween was done right, so everyone does a slash movie to go back to Halloween. It's that kind of thing where you go back to see what how you do, you do it, and then you do your own version of it. So Superman 2, I think, sort of like Spider-Man 2, uh, where it's, yeah, there's some flaws in it, but it's done so perfectly that it's in such a right pitch that it's just like, a, so good. It's the one of those kind of, classic superhero films. It's like the genre done right because it's it's sincere enough so that a lot of moments play sincere like when Superman takes away Lois's memories at the end so she won't worry about him. Stuff like that really works but at the same time it's broad enough so that it, uh, it's entertaining so that the, the mix is perfect and it's one of those films that should have been a mess because the production was but it wasn't, it was just perfect and there was no way to actually top that one so I mean when you got to Superman 3 you were kind of no matter what you did you were going to be told you were rubbish compared to Superman 2 because Superman 2 was so good